Hello, I'm Matthew Carver. And I'm Darlene Ducharme. The Oak Leaf Online starts now. You're watching The Oak Leaf Online, the student-produced media network of Santa Rosa Junior College and the Media 19 class. In national news, Dog the Bounty Hunter has joined the hunt for 23-year-old murder suspect Brian Laundrie, who is the fiancé of Gabriella Petito, a popular van life YouTuber who was reporting missing. Shortly after, Laundrie returned to his home, his, par his parents' home. He then disappeared. Ms. Petito's remains were found by the FBI on September 19th and believed by law enforcement to be a homicide. After hearing about the events surrounding Laundrie's disappearance, Dog decided to postpone his honeymoon and join the search. For local gardeners in the Sonoma County area, SRJC's Journalism 55 class recently interviewed Lenny Larkin of B-Side Farms about the benefits of buying flowers locally. Here's what she had to say. Right, I'm Lenny Larkin. I, uh, I own B-Side Farm in Sebastopol, California. Um, I'm an organic flower farmer. and. I started farming by growing vegetables, and I found it really important to um, to connect personally with the land. That's kind of what drew me into it. And I started growing vegetables to think about issues of food insecurity and try to address those on a really local level, try to get people involved with growing food and then distributing food to the, the local community. Uh, Flower farming, in my mind, can be just as important as vegetable farming. Um, there's a huge thriving flower um, economy and if we're not growing flowers locally consumers are still going to buy flowers and they're going to be imported and we have so much less control over uh, what goes into those flowers. Um, most people don't know but about 70 I think the statistic is about 70 percent of the flowers um, bought in the U.S. are imported. Ecuador and Colombia are two really hot spots of where flowers come from there's certainly some really poor conditions for workers and some really harsh chemicals that are used in growing flowers abroad and then shipping them to the United States, um, not to mention all the, the fossil fuels and just the waste involved with shipping flowers from one country to another. So there's so many important reasons to buy local flowers. Those are just a few of them. Um, it's also a great way to support local economies, support small growers who are kind of investing money back into the local community. And you can be pretty sure that someone who's growing a small, diversified farm of flowers or vegetables is treating their soil pretty well. Basically, to be able to, to get a good product, to get uh, flowers that look good and hold up and are vibrant, they're going to need to be grown with care. So you can almost look at the end result of the flower or the vegetable and be able to tell that the farmer is treating their soil with care. There's um, always something more interesting that you can always get. So I usually shop here and uh, across the way, but mm -hmm. usually I come here first and mm -hmm. pick out what uh, the most interesting looking texture wise. So you don't care if it's California or Ecuador or wherever it may uh, be? No, it's, it's just, it, it's got to be, yeah, it's got to be, uh, if it's interesting looking pot, of, uh, for, for, I'm always looking for texture and, and that type of thing, so I can find more variety here. I just, you know, I just love looking at everything that God creates, you know, it's just there's so much variety, and it's amazing, just like people, right? <laughs> Amy Crawford and Nick Vitas reporting. Thank you, Amy and Nick, for your reporting. Moving on to this week's game review, we have Renault to come with input on the recently released Psychonauts 2. Take it away, Renault. Thank you, Matthew. It's been 16 years since Psychonauts had had a proper sequel. The 2005 cold action platform was critically acclaimed, but also a financial failure. And now, after a wildly successful crowdfunding campaign and the buyout of Double Fine by Microsoft, Psychonauts 2 is finally on the digital screen. But is it as good as the first? Psychonauts 2 is a psychological-themed platformer that follows a young Rasputin Aquato three days after the end of the first game as he tries to figure out who would want to kidnap the leader of the Psychonauts. All the leads point to the long dead but powerful psychic Maligula and her death cultist Maligulus. Raz will have to learn to get along with his fellow Psychonauts in training, uncover mysteries of his family's dark history, and how it tied to the origin of the Psychonauts themselves. The gameplay is similar to that of the first game, 
as the rats collect figments of people's imagination and unlock their memories vault for more background. The writing has lost a bit of its cynical edge from the last game, seeming to focus on a more optimistic, if not sympathetic view of the damaged mind. Still, it was able to crack a laugh out of two for me. Even though the game is about 20 hours long, it left me wanting for more. Back to you, darling. Thank you, Renault. In other local news, the SRJC Board of Trustees unanimously voted to enact a vaccine mandate for students and employees on SRJC's campuses for the fall 2021 and spring 2022 semesters. Starting on October 18th, you will have to provide proof that you are fully vaccinated or submit to weekly testing. And by January 1st, you will have to prove your vaccination without the option of weekly testing to be on campus. That concludes this episode of the Oak Leaf Online. Thank you for watching. This has been another episode of the Oak Leaf Online, a production from SRJC's Media 19 class.